Hello, I'm Dr. Laura Pratesi. I'm a hard of hearing doctor of audiology and the owner of Citrus Hearing Clinic in Claremont, Florida. I was born with a progressive hearing loss and I am currently a bilateral hearing aid user myself. I believe that my job as an audiologist is to make sure my patients are making the best, most well-informed decisions about their hearing imbalance health care, which is why I love talking about audiology and related topics. Today, I wanna to talk with you about what goes into a cochlear implant evaluation. As an audiologist, there are three parts to cochlear implant evaluation candidacy. Number one, the hearing test. Number two, verifying the hearing aid. Number three, retesting hearing with, hearing with the hearing aids on. The first step is the one most people are familiar with. Almost everyone has had a hearing test at some point in their lives, even if it was just a hearing screening at school. This is the test where we play a series of beeps and the patient raises their hand or pushes a button to indicate that they heard a sound. A hearing screening is usually pass or fail. A comprehensive audio evaluation takes a little bit more time. It assesses how sound travels through the whole ear system, outer, middle, and inner ear. We look at the softest level a patient can hear and the loudest volume a patient can tolerate. We also look at speech understanding or recognition. Some of the words presented may be very soft and difficult to understand. Some of the words will be quite loud and may be easy to understand. Best practice guidelines say that we should even test how well patients hear in background noise. These tests help us determine not only how the organ for hearing is functioning, but also how well the brain is processing the sounds that it hears. Some hearing losses can be resolved by medication or even minor procedures like ear tubes. The second step is verifying that the hearing aids are doing exactly what the patient is needing them to do. If a patient has their own hearing aids, we usually start by performing electroacoustic analysis, also called EAA or test box measures. We hook the hearing aids up to a test box and run a systems check. Have you ever taken your card to a mechanic and had them hook it up to a computer to see if everything is working right? This is kind of like that. We're making sure the devices are meeting the manufacturer's specifications. Next, we check the prescription in the hearing aid. We do this by something called real ear measurements, REMs. The computer generates graphs that show the target volume a hearing aid should be emitting to correct a patient's hearing loss. We take a tiny microphone, place it down in the patient's ear canal, and measure at the level of the eardrum how much volume the hearing aid is putting in for soft, medium, and loud sounds. This makes sure that the hearing aid is not over or under amplifying, but is working just right. Only about 30% of offices that sell hearing aids are using real ear measurements, but to program a hearing aid without REMs is kind of like guessing that the hearing aid is doing what it needs to do. Without REMs, the prescription may be close to where a patient needs it to be, but close only counts when playing horseshoes or throwing hand grenades. Once we know where the hearing loss is and we've made sure the hearing aids are working properly, we can then move on to step three. We basically redo the hearing test, but this time the patient wears the hearing aids during the test. We present the beeps and speech through speakers in the sound field to get an idea of how much benefit the patient is receiving from the hearing aids. The candidacy criteria is kind of strict, but if the patient is not receiving at least a 40% benefit from the hearing aids, then we consider cochlear implants. Having a candidacy evaluation does not mean that you are committing to having surgery. It just means that the patient is exploring treatment options and is seeking to better understand where they may be struggling. I can say that at my clinic, we've had a lot of patients come in who have been struggling with their hearing aids for years. They're at the point where they think surgical intervention is the only option, and it turns out they really just had hearing aids that were not programmed appropriately for the degree of hearing loss that they have. We reprogram their devices and it makes a world of difference for them. 
When we do find that a patient is actually a potential candidate for cochlear implants, we then refer them to an otologist. An otologist is an ear, nose, and throat doctor that specifically specializes in ears and ear surgeries. Otologists are the cochlear implant surgeons. They have their own criteria that they look at to determine if a patient is a good candidate for surgery. This may include imaging studies such as MRI or CT scan. They may order blood work or consult with a patient's primary care doctor or cardiologist. They can counsel patients on the risks versus benefits of cochlear implant surgery. Again, seeking out a consult with a surgeon is not committing to going through with the procedure. It's just a chance to pick the brains of experts to help you decide if this is the right decision for you. If you or someone you know is struggling with hearing loss or wears hearing aids but seems to get little benefit from them, please feel free to reach out to us and schedule a free consultation appointment. We will review any medical records you have, hearing aid programming, and help you determine what the right next steps are for you. I went into this field because of my own hearing loss. It's why I started my own clinic. It's my mission to help others like me who maybe didn't realize just how much they were missing. Bye.